Today's dreamer is a 42-year-old woman who works as an artist. And uh, do you guys have it up? Do you want me to give you a minute before I start reading? Yeah, give me a minute. Okay. Uh, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there were workmen digging in the front yard of my childhood home where my parents still live. I was in one of the trenches myself, and I kept unearthing warthog skulls. I kept finding one warthog skull after another. Then I saw a lilac light glimmer through the soil. I dug down and found a unicorn skull with a glowing lilac horn. I quickly looked around to make sure no one else saw it. I reburied it, saying that I will come back later at night to get it. And she notes that a, this dream happened several years ago when I started a job at a major corporation, but it has remained really present. I just left that job to pursue my art full time. Mm. And the main feelings in the dream were wonder and keeping of a secret and a feeling that this was incredibly important. And uh, she notes that the unicorn skull seems to mean something about her creativity and artistic skills. Mm. So a, a, a lovely, uh, really interesting image here. You know, it's interesting that that image showed up in this dream that got chosen. And earlier on, you, we mentioned unicorns. Right. Yeah. And yeah. would you want one crashing around in your house? And your answer <laughs> was, sure, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Sounds good. So it's, it's interesting that. This image has um, shown up in those two ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at the dream. Well, the first thing, I just starting at the beginning, is um, they're digging in the front yard of the childhood home. Mm -hmm. So the setting in the beginning generally matters in a dream. And I will often, in my own mind, think, oh, so there's going to be work on the childhood or work mm -hmm. on the childhood complexes. Mm -hmm. And and this and something greater than us has decided. Well, that's a priority. That's that's what we're going to be digging around in. And mm. something's going to be dug up or excavated or unearthed. Right. So you know, if something's if something's buried in the ground, it it it's been there for a long time, mm -hmm. without our knowing about it. Yes. But it, you know, it was in consciousness before, but now it's it's gone unconscious. You know, I'm going to just Google warthog. <laughs> I was thinking about Lion King. <laughs> were those warthogs? Yeah, I guess they yeah, were. There was a the warthog, one of them warthog. And, and hyenas. Hyenas, okay. right. But the, the warthog was actually one of the good guys. I oh, was he? Okay. But what does it say on Google? Oh, God, they are ugly. <laughs> I, I think that if we see them as part of the pig family, that they would be associated with the, the very primal, super primal great mother. Mm -hmm. Because yes. the pig who, who survives in the wild also has numerous children, has numerous nipples, is big and robust. I mean, that's that symbol of nature as the fecund mother. And I think, I think, wasn't the pig sacred? Was it to um, Demeter? Ceres. Demeter, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The earth goddess, it. goddess of growing things, where mm -hmm. we get the word cereal from. Mm hmm. So I think of warthogs as being in that same place, uh, uh -huh. although they seem more exotic to us, not being from our part of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm imagining, though, uh, you know, from your instant reaction, Joseph, they're, they're really not attractive. They're ugly. Unlike but, the beautiful pigs that roam around <laughs> that are just fetching. Right. <laughs> but pigs, pigs are smart. Pigs they are. are sentient. And mm -hmm. pigs go from being little piglets to being market weight of 200 and some pounds or more in months, a matter mm -hmm. of months. Right. Uh, which is amazing. But my guess is that she's in the process. I like that she's in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she keeps on going with unearthing these ugly pig like. Not pleasing personas. They're not beautiful deer or adorable Persian cats. They're, they're shadow. They look ugly, but they have value. 
they are primal, that, you know, they are associated with the goddess. And she keeps going. It looks like, gosh, all I'm getting is warthogs here. Ugh. Warthogs all the way down. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And then I saw a lilac light. Mm -hmm. And finds the unicorn skull. Oh, I know. It's (laughs) it's such an astonishing image. What do we think about lilac? Mm. I mean, purple is associated with um, imp- like the emperor, mm-hmm. also with individuation. But lilac is a, you know, is a pale. Um, you know what I just realized I can do? Pale I can purple. share. I can put the dream up on the screen. Aha! Uh-huh. So people can see it. Um, oh my gosh, that's that's just great. So, uh, but so lilac is it? It's it's a pale purple. So it might be something kind of nascent or that's just kind of beginning. Mm-hmm. But it, it, also, it, it also evokes the flower. But the word purple mm. has only a meaning. It's only a color. But lilac right. is both a color but also a flower. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it, has a, it evokes several qualities to it. And lilacs, mm-hmm. of course, are fragrant. They grow in cold terrains. So they don't grow in real warm Areas because they need they require a very hard winter freeze Do in order they? for the buds to set. Yeah, because I've mm. tried to grow them down here in North Carolina. It's just sad. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to check um, my. Yeah. I'm going to check my um, symbol dictionary, Joseph. I like that idea mm-hmm. about lilacs. Let me just see if that's in here. So um, your, it, uh, it, mm-hmm. yeah, good. That's great. It's also interesting that it's shining through the soil. Mm-hmm. You know, no, no lilacs in the symbol dictionary. But but I want to footnote something uh, okay. just for all our listeners that just notice what we did. Uh, as soon as warthog came up, it's, oh, let me see what they really look like. Mm-hmm. As soon as lilac came up, of, oh, let me see what else this is associated with. Yeah. And that, that, that's a huge part of, of look it up, get an image, get a definition, get a... A, a link to a myth or a fairy tale so that we can amplify the image and make it bigger and get to the meaning. So let's go to the central image in the, in the dream, which of course the is the unicorn. That's the key feature of a unicorn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Otherwise you would just have a white horse. <laughs> yes. Well, to me also what's important is that She's excavating these bones, and they don't necessarily have any life in them. They're artifacts of something that was once alive. Ooh, good point. The unicorn is also an artifact of something that is now dead, that there is secret life in the horn, like a Mm. rhizome or a Mm. tuber or a root. Mm -hmm. That The thing that um, looks dead, the life force has withdrawn itself into the horn. Again. Lilac, like a lot of other uh, shrubs that are acclimated to very, very cold weather, all the life goes into the roots Mm. in order to survive the winter. Mm. And now it's time to excavate something that has been stored in the roots of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this dream is just such a perfect dream for what we were talking about today, because the 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 skull mm-hmm. with its glowing horn is is kind of an image of this vital spark, mm-hmm. and it literally was buried, and then it sounds like she did excavate it, and a few years later, uh, left her corporate job to become an artist, mm-hmm. and and that is exactly, um, you know, in fact, I just want to I want to amplify the dream actually with. Um, just a little snippet from the book because it's just so kind of perfect. Um, Jung says, the social goal, this is Jung, the social goal is attained only at the cost of a diminution of personality. Many, far too many aspects of life which should have been experienced lie in the lumber room among dusty memories, but sometimes too, 
They are glowing coals under gray ashes. Mm-hmm. Ah. And, yeah. Isn't that a beautiful, such a beautiful quote? Perfect. But, but here it is. The, the unicorn skull has been like a banked coal in her life. And it, it may be that it's taking place in the front yard of her childhood home because, uh, it, you know, perhaps art was a love in childhood, just like we were talking about before for some of us, you know, like, uh, like Francis Gum, and Judy Garland, we kind yeah. of knew. And now she's come back to it. What I'd like to expand upon is if the warthog's skulls are associated with the great mother, that the unicorn, which is often associated with the virginity, yes. that only the pure, the virgin, the uncorrupted consciousness can find the ethereal animal. Mm-hmm. So what we imagine is there, there was a unicorn, there was a virginal time in the life, something occurs, and what the horn represents, which might be the artistic interests, passes out of consciousness and it winds up getting buried. But what gets buried on top of it are more and more and more and more of the primal mother. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, Which may have been even appropriate at the time. I don't know if this person maybe had many years of being a mother. And so the artifacts of that build up on top of it. But if I can even just link it to my book, whether or not she's actually been a mother, the, the, the primal mother might be that kind of blind urge toward caregiving. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe you're, you're always the one who, uh, you know. You're the uh, warthog look, out there. Yeah, is looking out for coworkers or, or, you know, putting yourself out for friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's an interesting um, detail in the dream, Joseph. And I'm going to go back to my thought that it, a warthog can also be a great image of shadow. Mm. Wart- warthogs, they have these big horns. They're aggressive. Uh, you know, n- nobody feels all warm and fuzzy toward a warthog. And Speak yet, for yourself? They- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. <gasps> oh, tough. I didn't. I didn't mean you, Joseph. I know. <laughs> you've you've offended warthog. warthogs and Tony Soprano oh. today, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Where, what will happen next? But, but I, I do think there's a connection to shadow that we don't want to yeah. be. War, we don't want to be. A, I don't want to be a warthog. I would like to be a gazelle. <laughs> Maybe the warthog uh, could be the crone version of the pig in as much as it's kind of warty and yeah. fierce and. <laughs> Looks like something yes. the Baba Yaga might keep as a pet. Yeah. So I think all those things are are very good. They're not in opposition to each other. This mm-hmm. is an additive process. It's mm-hmm. this and it's this. And it could be this and it could be this. And you, our dreamer, thank you very much. You know, see what resonates for you. What, like the unicorn horn, lights up in you mm-hmm. about, about, war, about warthog. And, you know, I'm also content to leave it to our dreamer and other people who are listening. What's a unicorn exactly? Mm-hmm. Well, I will oh, tell you that the, the my, tell my you. symbol dictionary has <laughs> oh. multiple pages on unicorns. And Joseph yeah. already mm-hmm. alluded to the medieval legend mm-hmm. that uh, it would come and place its head docilely in the lap of a virgin. So there's there's Christian symbolism that goes along with it, and on and on. There's a lot. So there would yeah. that would be a, an interesting thing for the dreamer to do is look that up if she hasn't done that already. But thank yes. you, thank you to everyone yeah. who submitted a dream. I'm sorry that we couldn't get to them all. Oh. If you want a, a better shot at getting your dream interpreted, remember you can always become a patron. We do a patron. Uh, dreams from our Patreon uh, supporters. We do them, what, is it three times a month, Joseph, um, as extra dream episodes? That people can give us questions or dreams. Mm-hmm. We do one of those a month, or we do all of them at the end of the month and we just put them all out quickly. <laughs> but, uh, but generally speaking, that we release individual dream interpretations submitted exclusively by our patrons. Mm-hmm. So we hope you'll consider that. And, um, of course, we hope you'll also take a look at Dream School, uh, which is our 12-month online program 
where you can learn how to interpret dreams, similarly to how we just worked with this one.